Okay, so I think what we want to do is refactor so that we're always using the dot env to get these values so that we only ever have to change that in one place and it can be specific for each developer. Uh, we'll use the values from env to load seeds, to start rails, foreman will use it, and if we're not using foreman, we can use the dot env gem to make sure that things get loaded correctly. So let's go ahead and include dot env rails in the gem file. We only want it in development and test, so we can drop it into this group right here. And then we just have to run bundle install. Okay, that'll take just a minute. So then while it's doing that, Let's go to the seeds file here. Um, we want to be able to read, like for example, the code and uh, maybe even the name. Like we can set that in here to, um, we're also setting that in the secrets file. Maybe we'll refactor the name to pull it out of the secrets file. Um, all right, so the gem's installed. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is do a Rails dot um, environment dot secrets dot application name, and that way we only have this in one place instead of having it in the seeds file. I think this is confusing a lot of people because when they run the seeds, uh, it is setting up the incorrect initial account, um, which prevents a lot of the LTI stuff from working correctly. Uh, the code we could also get maybe from the secrets. Actually, we can pull the domain from the secrets as well. Okay, so what we can do here is um, we're going to pull the application URL from the Rails secrets as well. And we'll do that for both production and development. And then the code we want to get out of the environment. So we're going to pull that from the app subdomain. We'll try that. If not, I think there's also a Rails environment. There's another way to read environment variables. The LTI key can come from there as well. Um, and then we can also just generate a random LTI secret to put into there. Uh, in development mode, instead of canvas.instructure.com, I think I'm just going to let it be the Atomic Jolt one because that's the one we most use. If somebody else were to use this, then they're going to want to change that to be um, the URL of their own Canvas instance. It's not all that important. It's just the default value that's displayed uh, when you go to log in. Okay. Let's give this a try. So that gem did install. If I do rake db seed now. So it's not Rails environment. Does anybody remember what it is? It's Rails, maybe it's just Rails secrets. Um, application, that's what it is. Rails.application. Okay. So then that ran through and set up the accounts. Um, I'm going to do a full reset because we probably ended up with some weird account set up. Now if I just do a Rails console,
we can take a look. There should only be one account. There is. And hold the domain. And the LTI key. LTI secret is empty, which is fine for now. We do want to populate it with an LTI secret, um, but we can do that later. And in fact, what we might do um, I thought I had the code. Maybe it's in LTI methods. Yes, it is. So we have this ability to generate a random LTI key um, when the account is saved. It's actually interesting that it did not do that. And it's probably because we deliberately set it. So we're going to pull the LTI secret out of here like that. And then um, up here, regenerate those accounts. It's going to create a new window so that I can keep a Rails console open. All right, so we reset our database again. And it did generate the LTI secret for us, so we don't have to put, we don't have to hard code LTI secrets into this file anymore. We'll just depend on the normal account creation process to generate those secrets for us, which is nice because that means that we don't have secrets committed to GitHub um, by virtue of them living inside of this Ruby file. Okay, so now this will let us um, pull all of the values from our env file. Uh, by adding that gem, now when I do a uh, Rails server, um, I don't set a port or anything, when it starts up the Rails server, uh, it should also pull all of its values from ENV. Now, this means you can use Foreman to start up the project, or you can just start up things the way that, that we're used to. Um, 